The day is finally here. I bought a new SUV. Recently I crashed my and totaled my 2001 GMC Yukon. That was my big off-road capable SUV. It had a lift, it had big tires, it had a platform in the back. Instead of getting a new one, I thought I would try something else. And there are a lot of mosquitoes around, so I apologize if you see me swatting away bugs here. And in that video where I talk about that crash, you guys left comments, told me what my next car, what my next adventure mobile should be. You also emailed me and told me what I should get. Uh, I wanted to talk about some of the things that you guys told me I should get and why I didn't get those. So I got several comments telling me to get a minivan, which is not something I wanted for a variety of reasons, even if it's a minivan with a lift and slightly bigger tires. Uh, that's just not for me. First of all, the name of my channel is SUV RVing. I, I'm interested in SUVs. I don't really... I mean, minivans are fine. Minivans are great if they work for you. They don't really work for me. I don't want to drive a minivan around day to day. And uh, a minivan is not a good off-road vehicle. Even if you put a lift and the bigger tires on it, which is possible for some uh, makes and models, it's it's a it's a it's a minivan. It's not made for off-road travel. The the frame, the body, that car, that vehicle is not made for off-roading. And that's what I need. I need a car for off-roading. I already have a RAV4 that I use on my adventures that I will continue to use on my adventures. I'll alternate between my new car and the RAV4, just like I did with the, the Yukon and the RAV4. Minivan, not gonna work for me. Several people told me to get various Subarus, and I'm not against Subaru, but I, I need a bigger car. Subaru doesn't make really big SUVs. Uh, the Subarus that are on the market aren't really different enough from my RAV4 or my wife's Highlander to justify getting one. And the more I thought about it, the more I really wanted to get a Toyota, another Toyota, third Toyota car in our family. I like Toyotas, they're famously reliable, and I like how they're all similar in certain ways. For example, the cruise control works the same on all of them. And that's one thing that always kind of not annoyed me, but it was always something that I noticed when I was driving the Yukon. It had a noticeably different and, to me, not quite as good cruise control. And so just little things like that. It's nice to keep it all in the family, keep it all Toyota. So, what are some potential Toyotas I could get? First thing I thought of was an FJ Cruiser. I like FJ Cruisers. They're a little bit expensive. And, you know, I've looked at, at people's tours and I've, I've filmed a tour of someone who, who camped in their, in their FJ Cruiser. They're not great for that. They're not super long in the back, and there are just certain things that I didn't like, like the doors are kind of weird on the FJ Cruiser, and it's a really cool car. It is off-road capable. It's just not what I wanted. So I thought, okay, what about a Toyota Sequoia? I don't really like the look of the newer Toyota Sequoias, the second generation Toyota Sequoias. I know they're onto their, I think, third generation now, but um, I really like the first generation Toyota Sequoia. They basically look like a scaled up Forerunner, and apparently they make for great budget off-road vehicles or overland vehicles, but I wasn't excited about it. I'm not ruling one out for the future, but for this car, I didn't really want to get a Toyota Sequoia. The original plan was to get a Forerunner. Uh, I even went to a dealership with my wife. We sat in a couple of Forerunners, and I realized that they're not that big inside. And this might be obvious to you if you have owned or driven or ridden in a Forerunner. I've never driven in one, I don't think. And they're really not that much bigger than the RAV4. And I wanted something bigger so that it was better for when my wife and dog come with me on trips. And so I realized that a 4Runner wasn't going to cut it, even though that was the original plan after I crashed the Yukon. So if I want another Toyota, and I don't want a Highlander, which is what my wife drives, and I don't want a 4Runner, because it's too small, I don't want a Sequoia, because that's not very interesting to me. I don't want an FJ Cruiser for various reasons. What does that leave us with? Well, long story short, I bought a Land Cruiser. So why did I buy a Land Cruiser specifically? First of all, they're just cool. I've always liked Land Cruisers. They're probably my favorite SUV ever made. I think they just look awesome. And the second reason is that they're extremely off-road capable. Very, very capable. These things have all-time four-wheel drive. This particular one has a lift, has a two and a half inch lift and bigger tires. These are 33 inch BFG KO2 
tires. These things are legendarily reliable. They are overbuilt. They are tanks. They last forever. This one has only 146,000 miles on it. It's a 2000, by the way. I don't know if I said that. This is a 2000 Toyota Land Cruiser. These things will last. I mean, the engine will last 300,000, 400,000, 500,000 miles. It's just an incredibly beefy car, and I really like that. It's very reliable. I like that there's a large and active community doing things to and modifying their Land Cruisers. And it's the same thing with Forerunners and Jeeps also, but Land Cruisers are one of those vehicles that has a, a broad aftermarket accessory market, a broad third-party accessory market, and that's really, really cool. And I'm not gonna build this into a crazy rock crawler or anything like that. This is an SUV that I'm going to camp in. I'm not gonna put a rooftop tent on it or anything like that. But there are a couple of things that I am considering adding to it that I'm sure I'll talk about and go over in the future, in future videos if I do decide to go with those. At first, I didn't even consider a Land Cruiser because they are expensive. Originally, the plan was to spend about $15,000, get a nice used 4Runner with that. But then I realized that if I bumped it up a little bit, I could get a Land Cruiser. And so that's what I ended up doing. Uh, I live in Idaho, in Eastern Idaho. It's not super heavily populated. And so there weren't a ton of, of Land Cruisers to choose from. There was one pretty close to me that was like a full on decked out with a winch and uh, you know, a swing out tire carrier on the back. And um, you know, it was, it was impressive, but it had a lot of miles. Uh, a lot of them had a lot of miles. This is an old car, you know. I put a lot of miles on my cars, and so I wanted something with lower miles to start with. And so I ended up going to Utah. Um, I'm only about three hours, three and a half hours from Salt Lake. And so it's easy for me to go down there to, to buy things when I need to. And so I was looking on Facebook Marketplace, saw this one. I liked that it had low miles. I liked that it already had the lift and the bigger tires on it because uh, that was the, the real modification that I needed to do on a vehicle. And so it saved me a lot of time to have that already done and taken care of. This thing is also in excellent, excellent condition. Everything that can go wrong has been replaced on this. The inside is beautiful. There's no major cracking on the leather seats. So overall, it's just a really, really nice example of, of a 100 series Land Cruiser. That's what this generation of Land Cruiser is called, the 100 series. The previous generation, the 80 series, is awesome. I think they look better than this generation, but they're underpowered for fast, highway driving, which I do a lot of to get to the areas that I film. Uh, I think they only have V6 engines uh, in there. This has a V8. And then also this generation, the 100 series, is just a little bit nicer. It's more of a luxury car, which could be good or bad, depending on what you, what you need. But uh, it's nice to have a, a comfortable ride, a comfortable drive to cover all those long highway miles in. I'm in the middle of several modifications to make this the ultimate SUV camper. As you can see, it's not really finished up here. I have these weird bars up here that I'll talk about in the future. I have uh, this thing wired for solar already. Uh, these are the ends of the, the MC4 cables going down into the car. And I do have a platform built. And by the way, one other nice thing about this particular one is that the guy, the previous owner, installed a backup camera and an aftermarket stereo. So that's nice. One cool thing about the Land Cruiser is that it has a tailgate, which I really like, makes for a really convenient staging area. You can also use it as a step to get up onto the roof if you want. So this is the platform. Beautiful, isn't it? So my cousin who I built this with uh, is a woodworker, and so we did all the things to make just a really beautiful, really high quality, really strong platform. This is kind of a weird platform design. This is my preferred platform design. It's based more or less on the one that I made for the Yukon for my last car. I like being able to access the things under the platform while I'm inside. I don't care for the drawers that you pull out because most of the time I'm inside when I need to access the stuff. And so ultimately I'm gonna have a mattress here and a mattress here to make one solid mattress in effect. And so when I'm on this side, I can get into the stuff over here. When I'm on this side, I can get into the stuff over here. The drawers that you see a lot of people make just don't fit how I use my SUV campers. But uh, I'll go over this in more detail in a future video if you guys wanna see more details about this. I'm actually going to make a video, uh, the next video that you'll see about the Land Cruiser, which will be in about a month and a half because I have several videos from a RAV4 trip that I recently did. But the next Land Cruiser video will be me going over everything that I've done to this to make it 
an SUV camper. And so uh, I'm not gonna go over everything here in super detail, but uh, let me know if you have specific questions that you want me to answer either in the comments or in that future video. So we have a platform right here. And then behind the front seats here, we have the Jackery, the power station, and the fridge. And so this is all, again, still a work in progress. I've not yet camped in this. Again, I just got the platform built a couple of days ago, and I'm still very much in the middle of, of doing things to this vehicle. I have a list of about 20 or 30 things to, to do to it still, but I'll give you a look at the front here. It's a mess over there. But uh, like the seats are in really good shape, relatively speaking, for such an old vehicle. Just an awesome car. Oh, one other little modification I've done is, is add this aftermarket trip computer. This is a scan gauge two. And because this thing does have bigger tires, that throws off the odometer and the speedometer. And so that little computer plugs into the OBD2 port underneath the steering wheel and that powers it. And then that also gives it all the information, all the data it needs. And so I can adjust that thing. I can calibrate that thing to accurately reflect my current speed and, uh, and the miles that I've gone and also my miles per gallon and everything. So that's one downside about this vehicle. It is not fuel efficient. Ostensibly, it gets about 13 to 15 miles per gallon. So 13 city. 15 highway and that's about what I've gotten in this. I've actually gotten a little bit more than that I think I've only had the computer in there for a couple days, but uh, I'm I'm usually toward the upper end of that Once I start adding stuff to this that's gonna drop like I do have a cargo box already For this car that I'm gonna be putting on and I'm gonna be putting a solar panel on there I'm gonna be strapping uh, other things to the top and that's gonna you know drop the the miles per gallon by one or two I would guess not ideal, but again, for when I want to be fuel efficient, I have the RAV4 that gets 24, 25 miles per gallon fully loaded. This fully loaded, I'm guessing like 12. That's what I'm expecting. And so there you have it. This is my new adventure mobile. I'm really excited. I really love this car. I, I like this car more than I've liked any other vehicle that I've owned. Uh, this is just a really beautiful to me car. I like the way this car looks. I like the way it drives. It's very smooth and quiet. That was the first thing my wife mentioned when she got in and when she drove it. It's a very smooth, quiet car, despite how off-road capable it is. It's just a nice car to drive. It's quieter and nicer and easier to drive than the Yukon. I liked the Yukon, uh, and that was easy to drive too, but this is way quieter and way smoother. A couple other things. Uh, this has a sunroof. This is the first adventure car that I've had that has a sunroof. My wife's Highlander has a sunroof, but I don't usually take that, that car on trips. And then also because this car kind of cants forward a little bit, the, the stance of this car is, is forward a little bit. I'm going to be sleeping with my head at the back, which I've never done before in any of my vehicles. So that should be interesting too. Uh, but overall, again, I have a lot to do with this rig over the next few weeks, and I'm going to be compiling all of that into one video. And so I'm going to make the video about all the things that I've done to this car to make it the ultimate SUV camper, including things like, you know, like the solar panels, like the cargo box, like the, the window screens I'm going to have in the car, all that sort of thing. So let me know what else you want to see in that video. Let me know if you have any questions about stuff you saw in this video. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. I'll see you in the next one. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site, where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.